It has been said that commanders of submarines are a different breed of naval officer altogether. It makes sense. Being submerged in a cramped tube, especially when under threat of attack by ships and planes above water, can take its toll on a crew. A submarine demands a captain that is tenacious, daring, and thinks quickly on his feet. It's not surprising then that submarine commanders are often the mavericks, even renegades of the Navy. And perhaps one of the more famous maverick naval officers of World War II was the German submarine captain Werner Henke. His life and short but brilliant stint as a submarine captain was fascinating and deserves a closer look. Werner Henke was born on May 13, 1909, outside the town of Thorn in what was then East Prussia and is today situated in Poland. In fact, Henke's family moved to Hanover in 1920, when the region of Thorn was ceded over to Poland in the aftermath of Germany's First World War defeat. Henke joined the German Navy or Reichsmarine aged 25 in 1934, after having spent several years in the Merchant Navy. That time spent in the rough and tumble and more undisciplined civilian navy may have had a bearing on Henke's renegade attitudes later in his career. He was a man not known to take easily to being told what to do, Nevertheless, Henke attended the Naval Academy at Merwick. Ironically, Henke would spend only one week studying U-boat warfare during the five years of training he undertook at the Academy. During this time, Henke spent nearly two years stationed at the Pilau Naval Base, or what is today named Baltisk, which is now situated in the Kaliningrad region of Russia. Henke would be assigned to the battleship Schleswig-Holstein in 1939, as well as the Admiral Scheer. That same year he would take part in the Battle of Westerplatte, which was the first battle that Nazi Germany waged when it invaded Poland. Werner Henke was there when the very first shots of the Second World War were fired. It would be in April 1940, a full seven months into World War II, that Henke commenced six weeks of training at the U-boat school at Neustadt in Holstein. The famed facility was based on the Baltic sea coast of northern Germany, and only the best in the Navy were allowed to attend. However, we need to remember that Henke had a problem with authority, and it so happened that he was convicted of desertion and sent to a punishment unit even before he finished his U-boat training. Nevertheless, Henke was still assigned to U-124 under the command of Captain Lieutenant Wilhelm Schultz. He would then be sent for training as a submarine commander. Such was Henke's mercurial talent as a submariner that he got to commission his own boat, U-515 in February of 1942, mere months after his submarine commander training. He was now Captain Lieutenant Werner Henke. His most famed performance as captain of the U-boat was during a third patrol on the night of April 30th to May 1st, 1943, in which he attacked a convoy 90 miles or 145 kilometers south of Freetown in what is today Sierra Leone. U-515 under Henke's direction sank eight ships in eight hours with a total of 49,456 tonnage sunk. For this enormous achievement off the west coast of Africa, he would be awarded the highly prestigious oak leaves to the Knight's Cross. Keep in mind that this was an officer who had been arrested for desertion just three years earlier. U-515 as commanded by Henke went on seven patrols for a total of 341 days between February 21, 1942 and April 9, 1944. His U-boat sank 22 ships and included naval and merchant vessels from Great Britain, the Netherlands, Panama, Norway, the United States, France, and Belgium. After a short test run on March 28, 1944, Henke was amazed when he heard the following on an intercepted Allied radio message, U-515 is leaving again tomorrow. Henke shouldn't believe that we have forgotten. We'll get him this time. And the Allies did get Henke and the formidable U-515 less than two weeks later. The submarine was initially attacked by a carrier aircraft after surfacing on April 9, 1944. The crew of U-515 then endured six hours of fighting with Allied vessels, but the sub was eventually so badly damaged that they were forced to surface. The surviving men, Henke included, left the crippled sub and watched it go down into the depths for the last time. The famous U-515 was sunk in the afternoon of April 9, 1944, in the North Atlantic to the north of the Portuguese island of Madeira. 
the German U-boat had been attacked by aircraft from the U.S. escort carrier USS Guadalcanal and depth charges from no less than four American escort destroyers, namely the USS Chatelain, USS Flaherty, USS Pillsbury, and USS Pope. That was what it took to finally sink U-515 and capture Werner Henke. Sixteen of the sixty men on board Henke's sub didn't make it. Henke would be interned along with 18 of his men in the interrogation center, with the rather oblique designation of P.O. Box 1142, which was at Fort Hunt in Virginia. Unsurprisingly, Henke turned out to be a quarrelsome and arrogant prisoner who the Americans hated. Controversy seemed to follow Henke even before he was captured. British propaganda accused him of having shot at survivors, including women and children, of the British passenger ship Ceramic. The Voice of America went even further when it broadcast on June 27, 1943, accusing Werner Henke of having shot and killed no less than 264 survivors of the ceramic sinking. The Voice of America proclaimed, We Americans will punish individuals who are guilty of particular atrocities after the war, including Werner Henke. The accusations were entirely false, typical of Allied propaganda during the war. Henke had done no such thing, yet he must have known that there was a good chance he'd be tried for war crimes once he was extradited back to Great Britain. After his capture, the American captain, Daniel Vincent Gallery, had even used this against him, threatening to turn Henke over to the British if he did not cooperate and offer German secrets, particularly regarding U-boat strategies. Captain Gallery did get Henke to sign a paper in which he agreed to cooperate with interrogators. Henke would then renege on that agreement, but not before many of his crew signed similar agreements to cooperate, having heard that their commander had already signed such a document. It's worth noting that the sinking of the ceramic had happened during a huge storm. Henke had been commandeered by Central Command to return to the scene of the sinking the next day. The sub spotted a lifeboat from the passenger ship, but was able to save only one survivor, as all others in the lifeboat had perished. And all this was done as a nearly forced 10 storm was raging. That man would be the sole survivor of the 656 souls on board Ceramic. Even neutral rescue ships from the nearby São Miguel Island of the Portuguese Azores had been unable to go to sea due to the severe storm. A search two days later by the Portuguese destroyer NRP Dow found no survivors. And there were of course no bodies with bullet wounds floating in the water either. Britain never got the chance to extradite Henka. Instead, Henke made an attempt at an escape that was brazen, if not downright mad. It's reported that he simply walked up to the fence in broad daylight and started climbing it. The guard shouted for him to come down, but he just kept slowly clambering up the fence. Finally, one of the guards shot at him with a machine gun and Henke fell to the ground, deceased. There has been much speculation about why Henke chose to end his life in the way he did. There's no doubt that what he attempted was suicidal. The most obvious explanation for climbing that fence was because of his possible extradition to Great Britain on the trumped charges of war crimes. Henke probably also knew he would stand no chance in a British court. Henke is buried in the Post Cemetery at Fort George G. Meade in Maryland. He lies there along with 32 other German POWs and three Italian POWs.